Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning and welcome to a very beautiful day the Lord has given to each and every one of us. I know you had a wonderful night rest and I know that today is going to be a very blessed day for you. So for us to continue in our activity for the day, we need to hear the word of God and know what God has in mind for us. So we're going to take our prayers and then we'll look into the word of God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word is yes and amen. We thank you for bringing us into this wonderful new day. Lord, we pray that the world will hear, will be blessed. And our activity today will be blessed by you. Be thou exalted in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. We're going to take a reading from the book of Ephesians chapter 5. 15 to 20. Ephesians chapter 5, 15 to 20. And we'll be discussing on the topic that says the Christian and the evil days. The Christian and the evil days. Ephesians 5, 15. Pay careful attention then on how you walk, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time because the days are evil. So don't be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. And don't get drunk with wine, which leads to reckless action, but be filled by the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making music from your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We are discussing this morning on the topic that says the Christian and the evil days. Everybody knows that we are now in the evil days. The evil days are here with us. The days of trouble, calamity, problem. You wake up, you're on your television set, you're listening to the news, you go on your Facebook, you see bad news. You see unimaginable evil taking place all over the world. You see killing, you see destruction, you see people living a life as if without conscience, as if people doing things that you cannot imagine that can happen in this world. These are the evil days. And you see it becoming every day more difficult to live your life as a Christian. And even as a normal human being, the days in which we are are evil. But God is saying he has a way out for you as his child. He has a program for you. He has a plan for you. He knows that a day like this will come. And a Christian is somebody who is saved, who has been delivered from satanic activities. If you are not a Christian, you have this privilege to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior by asking Jesus to come into your life to be your personal Lord and Savior. You confess your sins. And the Bible says in John chapter 1 verse 12 that as many that receive him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God. You see, when you now accept Jesus into your life, he will give you the power. He will give you the ability. He will give you the grace. He will make it easy for you to live your life the way it will glorify God. And we know that because of that faith we have in Jesus, the world hates us. You don't need any how to explain it. You see the system of the world. You see the policies in government. You see the way things are being organized. Christians are objects of attack in nations of the world. Christians are victims of circumstances. 
People wake up one morning, they condemn the Bible, they condemn the Ten Commandments, they condemn things that are supposed to help them. And you see, when these things happen, God is in heaven and he knows that a day like this will come and he has a road map for you as a, ch a child of God. You know, in this world, the Satan has taken over the worldly systems. And they are increasingly making it difficult for people to live their life as a Christian. The world is getting progressively ungodly. The world is getting unrighteous. Right, unright, righteousness is becoming outdated. Evil, lesbianism, homosexuality. People are living their life. You see things that you're not supposed to see. Pornographic things that are not right. They are taking over the airways. They are taking over the system. They are taking over the whole place. But God is saying, I know that a day like this will come. And God is calling on each and every one of us and said, I have a road map. I have a plan on how you will succeed. So don't be afraid. Don't think because the world has changed, things are changing, that you're going to lose your faith. There are people who have already existed in evil days. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abadnego. They existed in a time when it was difficult for somebody to stand in and say that I am a, a, a Jew in their own time or that I believe in God. Because the food they were eating were all offered to idols. The government have institutionalized idolatry in the system, and they have even prepared fire ready for people who cannot bow to it. And But God helped them. They were able to make it. And they didn't just make it becoming, they were people in power. They controlled authority. They were in power. You look at Obadiah that was the assistant to, to Ahab. It was an evil day, but God was boasting. He has prophets who have not bowed down to idol in the time of Ahab. So God is interested in raising us to live in these evil days. And for us to live in these evil days, there are biblical patterns. And when we look at the passage where we read in verse 15, he said, pay careful attention. Then on how you walk, not as unwise people, but as wise. You see, for you to survive in these difficult days, there is something that is needed in your life. There is something that I need. One of them is wisdom. God gave wisdom to Solomon. And God said, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask. So if you are in lack of wisdom, you need it because with wisdom, God is going to, to direct you. See, in the world, they may not give you the time to go and ask your pastor, to go and ask your reverend or your bishop, or how do I maneuver, how do I come out of this? You see, that same thing operated even in the time Jesus was here on earth. They brought Jesus and they said, we have a question for you. Answer us here and now. Do we pay tax to Caesar or do we not? And Jesus knows if you say pay tax to Caesar, the Jews will be angry. Don't pay, the, the, the government will come after him and the, the wisdom was at play. And he said, bring the coin. You see, you need that wisdom. For you to survive this terrain, for you to wangle through this difficult time, you need wisdom, you need divine intuition, you need God to load you, and God said, I will give you wisdom. In fact, he promised and said, don't even bother on what to say and how to say it. I will be there, the Holy Spirit will be there to supply the wisdom of the moment. And God is said, be careful, pay careful attention. Is a guide that you need to be careful in what you do. You don't just look at things at their literal value. You don't just accept things the way they are. You need to be careful in your dealing 
When they are bringing paper for you to sign, you need to read it very well. When they are giving you an offer, you, know, you need to be careful. There may be even a camera watching you. There may be somebody who is trying to blackmail you. So you need to be careful. You don't just live your life carelessly. You don't just carry yourself carelessly. You need to be careful in that office. You need to be careful in that business dealing. You need to be careful in what you are doing. Not what everybody is saying in their mouth is what they are doing. They may be putting up a pit for you. They may be putting up small, small claws that is going to trap you. But God said, you have to be careful. You have to have wisdom. Another thing we can see God demanding from us is that God said that we need to utilize every opportunity for the advantage of God's kingdom. Making the most of the time because the days are evil. You don't waste opportunity. You don't mismanage your time. You see, God brings opportunity. He says, there is always a way of escape. There is something the Holy Spirit will be prompting you to do. Time is of essence. Maximize every opportunity that God is bringing your way. But you need to know that not every open door is open door. That there are some open doors that are open grave. There are some open doors you will see, they are trap. But when you see it, God said, first of all, be wise. Be careful how you walk. And then he said, maximize every opportunity. You have the Holy Spirit to guide you. And in verse 17, he says, So don't be foolish, but understand what the will of God is. That is what makes you different from the world. You have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will be telling you what to do. Yes, they may think you are alone, but the voice of God is there directing you and say, don't do this, don't do that. The Holy Spirit, who sees tomorrow? Who sees what they have in mind? Who reads what they are planning? He will be directing you. He said, be understand. Know what is God's will for you. Know what God wants you to do at that particular moment. And he said, because we are in the evil days, you need to be alert in the spirit. And he said, don't get drunk with wine, which leads to reckless action. You see, this is a time you need to be in charge of your body. You need to be in charge of your brain. One thing wine does, alcoholic wine does, it does, it takes you to excitement level. It takes you a level where you are no more in control. And I believe that is why Lemuel was being told, don't give yourself to wine. Don't give yourself to strong drink because you need to be articulate in everything you are doing. You need to be in the right frame of mind everything, every time and everywhere. In every meeting, you need to be sound in mind. And so you don't give yourself to alcohol. You don't give yourself to strong drink. You don't give yourself to merriment. Yes, there are times of relaxation, but you have to be alert. And he said, rather be filled with the Holy Spirit. And he says, a very important one in verse 19, he said, speaking to one another in psalms and in hymn singing. Giving God thanks. You see, music has a way of relaxing mind. Yes, you don't need to be worked up. You don't need to be always under pressure, under tension. And that is why you are a Christian. The Spirit of God will prompt up the song within you. There is joy like a river, joy like a river. There may be many songs, so many hymns. He says, sing to yourself, sing to one another. Even at that 
terrible time in prison. That's what Paul and Silas did when they were in prison. People were expecting them to grumble. People were expecting them to complain, but they changed the gear. They turned that atmosphere to atmosphere of worship. They began to sing praises to God. They began to worship him. They were making music. You, are, you can make music. Yes, it may not be palatable to some other person's ear, but it is palatable to you. You sing to yourself. You encourage yourself by him, by word of God. You talk to yourself. You preach to yourself. You, you encourage yourself. Yes, you may not have the time to go to the church and the pastor will encourage you, but there is a word of God that will prompt up in your spirit and will tell you, Though I am with you always. He said, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil. There is always the Holy Spirit there. He said, making music in your heart, singing spiritual songs, singing in hymns and psalms. And he says again, giving thanks always. Giving thanks always to God. You know, it is difficult that when things are getting tough, you'll be thanking God. But that is the mystery of Christianity. That is the mystery of relationship with God. That you are not seeing it the way. You see, when you are giving thanks to God in a situation, it means you are not seeing the problem. That you are seeing somebody who has capacity over that problem. That is what worship does. When, because that problem is expected to take your attention. But you see, when you are giving thanks, when you are, you are giving thanks, it means you are not giving attention to the problem. You are giving attention to him who has the capacity over that problem. You are giving attention to him who has power over that challenge you are facing. We are giving attention to him who has the ability to control the minds of kings. They are expecting you to be worried. They are expecting you to be fidgeting. But you see, when you are singing, when you are giving thanks to God and say, see Jesus, when he was faced with 5,000 people to feed, he asked them to sit down. He lifted up the bread. Ordinarily, people should have said, God, you know this bread is not enough. But he said, God, I thank you. When he, Jesus was even standing in front of the tomb of Lazarus, he lifted up thanksgiving and said, God, I thank you. He started thanking him for what he has done before. Yes, when you see, when you thank God for what he has done before in your life, you are prompting faith in you. And you are telling him, I know you can do it again. So he said, giving thanks to God in all things. These are God's prescription to overcome the evil days. These are God's direction on how to overcome the evil days. He's talking to you about being wise, being careful, being filled with the Holy Spirit, being calm, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns, giving thanks to God, being filled with the Holy Spirit, making most use of your time, managing your opportunities very well. I tell you, when you do live your life this way, the people will be wondering, how did you make it? How did you succeed? But you will begin to tell them about Jesus and his ability to change situations. And I tell you, that same God who helped Daniel in his time, in his difficult time, to have deliverance. That same God who helped Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, not just to live in Babylon, but to live a worthy life. That same God is here to help you. This morning, we are going to pray. I will be praying and saying, Heavenly Father, thank you for your provision for me to overcome the evil days. Help me to commit myself to practicing them in Jesus' name. You need to thank God again because the provisions are there. He said, I will not leave you like orphans. I will make a way for you where there is no way. And I tell you, as you go on today, to confront today, to confront the difficult days ahead of you, to confront your environment. God is going to go with you. And I tell you, you're going to come back today with testimony. You're going to come back today with testimony. And every day of your life will be full of testimony because God is going with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, 
you are the one who have allowed us to live in these evil days. In your name, we receive grace to operate. In wisdom, to operate in love. To operate in our ways, making most use of the opportunity. Being filled with the Holy Spirit and not with wine. I'm giving you thanks in everything. Lord, we give you praise. Because we are going to overcome. And Lord, we pray for your children. Anyone having difficulty in overcoming these days, may God of heaven go with you. I command that difficulty to be neutralized. I release victory for you. May the Lord go ahead of you. May he make a way for you. May you come back with testimony. May God grant you favor. And I command that mountain before you to be dissolved. And may you be victorious. I declare you victorious. I declare you a winner. I declare you a child of God. You will succeed in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Thank you.